Good evening, I'm Lucinda Gabriel, and today we are January 31st, 2021. So today I have a message that's on my heart, and I know I've talked about this before, and you'll probably see it come up in my news feed in the next weeks, And uh, but I feel it so strongly in my heart these days to, to speak about healing and deliverance again. And uh, because God, God is just so mighty that uh, what just came to me actually before I started was somebody wrote me today about, um, about the COVID and said, you know, basically, uh, can, can, you know, can God take this away from us? And, uh, and I'm like, of course he can. He's God, right? There's nothing he cannot do. But I believe, I believe this is what God put on my heart just now that he is using this to glorify himself like God is so amazing and uh, it's a perfect time for him to be glorified because so many people right now um, are, are being locked out of bars and restaurants and all things that you know kept them busy and distracted from knowing the Lord and so now they're at home they're bored, uh, so they have time to think about things. So many people, too, you know, have questions about life because the way things are going, I mean, you really got to stop and wonder about things. So I think more people are start, starting to think. And also another big thing that he spoke to me about just now was that many people are, are not being able to make it for their treatments and for their appointments. And so... Um, they're not getting the care that they need. So the access to health care is not what it used to be here in Canada and probably everywhere. And so God is going to use that to glorify himself. And he wants me to speak about this tonight because if you call it to God, if you have that problem and you can't get treatment or healing for whatever it is you need, call out to God and I'm going to I'm going to share with you tonight what God wants to tell you about healing so you can know that God wants to heal you you know we weren't ever meant to be sick especially in the way that we feel it and experience it today so I'm going to to share with you on this message um, that Jesus wants to share with you about healing so to comfort you and to show you that he has that for you too. You just got to want it. Okay. You just got to want it. So, um, I want to share with you tonight about how God heals you and delivers you out of bondage. And when I say bondage, that's bondage to anxiety and fear and depression. Uh, it could be addictions, alcohol, smoking, whatever it is that's going on. Cause we all, have something that we use to soothe ourselves, to fill the void, okay? Whatever that is keeping you in slavery to that, you know, that bondage that we have, Jesus came to heal us from that. God wants to heal you from that. So I want to explain to you tonight how that works. And this is the message that God put on my heart for you. So sadly, so much of the real truth about Jesus is lost today. It's distorted by atheism and drowned into religion and there seems to be nothing but a remnant of truth left and I know this depends a lot on where you live in the world of course you know I'm here in Quebec it's very Catholic and in Canada like you know in the West it seems more conservative and so we haven't really like especially where I live and grew up you know we never really heard the truth very much or at least I didn't you know and uh, so I'm going to lead you into this truth that God wants to share with you tonight about all of this. So I know that, like I said, it depends on where you live in the world, but true biblical disciples are as few as the number of Israelites who actually made it to the promised land after being led out of slavery from Egypt by our most high, magnificent God. And that number was actually two out of 600,000 men, not including the women and the children. So that in itself, just two out of 600,000 is less than 1%. So that is so few people. 
so that's what I see today. It's very, very, very few people that are actually true biblical disciples like Jesus had trained his own disciples to be in the book of Acts. Like we see them, you know, doing things as the book of Acts. Uh, so after reading the Bible for these past few years by myself, it saddens me greatly to see that the world does not truly know God. Many claim to believe in a God and many, many even call themselves Christian and others even call themselves born again. But sadly, many still do not truly know the real, loving, holy, righteous and consuming fire God. That's what people don't know. Because a lot of people today think, oh, God is love. But God is not just love. God God is righteous and he's holy and he's a consuming fire and, and he, he has a standard. And so I want to talk to you a bit about that. So God the Father, the creator of the heavens and the earth, has been trying to reconcile his people with him since the days of Adam and Eve. And when they disobeyed God and, and sinned, in the garden and then the sin entered the world right so ever since then God has been trying to reconcile ourselves back to him and in those days there was no sickness on the you know on the earth there was just them two right of course they were just pure they were just made they were holy and so there was nothing it was no sickness and that's the way it was supposed to stay that's the way it was supposed to be but because God is a loving God and he gave them the choice to love him and obey him or not, you know, um, the he, he gave them the option, right, of eating the tree, the, the fruit from the tree and stuff. So, you know, you know the story, the serpent tricked Eve into eating the fruit on the tree. And so she gave it to Adam. So that's how it all came into the world. And because of their sin, God put them out of the garden because if they would have eaten from the tree of um, of life, while well, sin would have lived forever. That's exactly what's said in the Bible. Sin would have lived forever, so he had to put them out. And this is where the separation from people and God came in. And so to eliminate sin, God decided to flood the world because after they came out of the garden, you know, they multiplied, of course, and they had children who had children who had children, and, and sin just became like extremely rampant. All of a sudden, it was really quick. And so God, to eliminate that sin, well, you know, he, he flooded the world and all its wickedness with it, right? And he told um, a righteous man, Noah, he was the only righteous man that he saw, and he told him to build an ark and he was going to spare him and his family. There was eight of them all together with, you know, uh, two of every species of the animals. And so God sent the flood on the earth and killed mankind except for those eight people. And then he started over again. And God regretted what he did, and he vowed to never do it again. He would never flood, flood the earth again. And once the water subsided, uh, the first thing that Noah did was to make wine for himself, and then he became drunk, and then he became a drunk. And then that's when God saw that sin was still in the world. It was actually in the heart of man. And so he had to find something to fix the heart of man. So many times after that, after Noah, he tried to help the people, to guide them and direct them in a righteous way, to show them the right way. After he, um, he led them out of Egypt, this is what he said. He says, if you diligently heed the voice of the Lord, that means if you diligently like listen and follow my voice, follow what I say, obey me. So heed the voice of the Lord your God and do what is right in his sight. Give here to his commandments and keep all his statutes. I will put none of the diseases on you which I have brought on the Egyptians, for I am the Lord who heals you. Okay, so just that 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 phrase is so powerful and so full in itself, because it reminds me of somebody that wrote on my Facebook page too this week. You know, questioning like, is everybody is. Yeah, she she asked me like okay is everybody sick because they don't um, they don't follow the Bible was her exact words I think and well yes it's, and it's not the Bible is God God you know the Bible is the the it's written by men of course because somebody had to write it but it's the inspired word of God 
and it's the account of everything that has happened. It's history, right? And um, and so you have Moses, for example, that wrote many of the books in the first um, in the Old Testament, and uh, and you have where you know the voice of God spoke to him and said to him these things to tell his people, and it's so detailed. It's absolutely incredible. I strongly suggest that you go and read it. And if you want a copy, contact me. I have some. And so it's just absolutely amazing how how God was leading these people. So this is what he said to Moses to tell the people. If you diligently hear, heed my voice of the Lord, heed the voice of the Lord your God, and do what is right in his sight, give ear to his commandments and keep all his statutes. I will put none of these diseases on you which I have brought on the Egyptians, for I am the Lord who heals you. So God is the Lord who heals us. Do you see that? I am the Lord who heals you. So even though the people were led out of Egypt in such a magnificent way, you probably know the story, right? After nine plagues were sent to anger the Pharaoh to the point of setting the Israelites free, After God saved them with the blood of the lambs, the night the angel of death passed over and killed all the firstborns, after God led them out of Egypt and through the Red Sea with a pillar of light by night and a cloud by day, he snowed bread from heaven, he brought forth water from a rock, and still the people complained and dishonored and disobeyed God. After all the miracles, They've seen after everything they had been through and God just showed his glory to them, they still dishonored and disobeyed him, which is mind-boggling. And um, and I just want to say before I continue that the Israelites' journey out of Egypt is like very similar to our journey from our own slavery and time in darkness. So our own slavery in our own life, because we're all slaves to sin until we're freed. So we are all lost, blind slaves to sin and a prisoner of the prince of darkness. And this is Satan. In the Bible, it's clear in the New Testament that Satan is real. He is the prince of darkness and we're all slaves and prisoners to him until we find the truth. Many people just don't know it. And just like God set the Israelites free from Egypt, Jesus came to save us out of that kingdom of darkness. And by our faith in Jesus, the Lamb, who was you know, a sacrifice for our sins, we are saved through our baptism, the Red Sea, our sins are washed away, and our enemies are drowned in the water. And then we are called forth to walk in holiness and leave our old life behind. So you see, it's exactly the same picture as the Israelites when they were saved from the Egyptians. So it's it's the same kind of thing that's happening. The Israelites complained about what they had left behind and they did not look forward to the promised land that was ahead. And because of this, most did not inherit the promise. In the same way today, we are called to believe in the sacrifice of Jesus, the Lamb of God, who took away the sins of the world, and we are to be washed clean in the water of baptism by immersion, to be set free and delivered from our enemies, addictions, and evil spirits. And we are to receive the Holy Spirit and be led by Him so we can walk in the kingdom of God freely, and not look back and keep our eyes focused on the promised land of eternal life that's before us. So you see, that's the picture. So God has been trying to free us all this time. So God gave the Israelites his Ten Commandments to give basic instructions on how to live righteously. And he said, in Exodus 23, 25, worship the Lord your God and his blessing will be on your food and your water and I will take away sickness from you. So all throughout the Old Testament, you see like God is in control of everything. Like what amazed me at one point, I can't even tell you where it was, but 
um, you talked about how E is the one that opens up wounds and closes wounds. Like if you are trying to have a baby, you want to go to God. You want to ask him for a baby because he is the, the, the God of the impossible. He's the miracle worker. So the miracle maker, you go to him, whatever it is that you want, there's nothing he cannot do. And there's nothing he wouldn't do for you if you ask and believe. So he said, worship the Lord your God and his blessing will be on your food and water and I will take away sickness from amongst you. In 2 Chronicles 7, 14, 15, if my people, and this is the most important one, um, I shared this with you a few weeks ago, I think I prayed one morning, I'm like, God, why aren't you showing up to other people like you showed up to me? Why, 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 Lord? And I clearly heard these three words, if my people. And God was saying that if you do what I did, humble yourself, call him by his name and pray and seek his face and turn from your wicked ways. And I will hear from heaven, he says, and I will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Now my eyes will be open and my ears attentive to the prayers offered in this place. So heal their land is not only their land, but it's to heal everything. Heal their life, heal their bodies, heal their mind, whatever it is you need healing with. So God said, if my people would humble themselves and call me by my name, pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, I will hear them from heaven. That's what God wants you to do. So in Jeremiah 30, 17, God says, but I will restore you to health and heal your wounds, declares the Lord. So God, you see here again, he's saying, I will restore you to health and heal your wounds. And we can stand on God's promises. If God says it, he's going to do it. You just got to remind him of what is part of the deal is. And you have to fulfill your part of the deal as well. When God saw that his people would still not listen and obey, he told the prophets of his plans to solve the problem of sin once and for all. And this would also deal with sickness and evil. So you see, in the Old Testament, you know, the, the problem was um, the wickedness was in their heart. And so God gave them rules, commandments to, to go by. And they would have to sacrifice uh, animals, right, to to be cleansed of their sin. But it was it was, you know, always having to continue to do it, right? They were never free from it. So God had another plan, and that was to send His Son Jesus, who would be the Lamb of God, who would take away the sins of the world, and He would do it once and for all. Because after that, like, you don't need any more sacrifice. He was the last sacrifice. So there's no more need for sacrifice of animals today because Jesus was the Lamb of God. And in the Old Testament, we see that in uh, Isaiah chapter 53, this is what God told Isaiah about his plan. He says, surely, and this he's talking about a servant that he's going to send. And he says, surely, he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. All we like, all we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him, Jesus, the iniquity of us all. So what he's saying exactly is that Jesus died for our griefs, our sorrows, our transgressions, our iniquities, our sins. He died for our peace and for our healing. And we are sheep that are lost, gone our own way, but Jesus took everything on him so we can be freed and delivered and healed so and what we what he asks is for us to just believe in him right so all we have to do is humble ourselves believe in jesus and what he has done on the cross 
repent from our sins. Repentance is the biggest part. Turn from our wicked ways and he will forgive us, heal us and deliver us. We are to wash away our sins in the baptism and receive his Holy Spirit so we can have the power to overcome sin. So that's the way it's supposed to be. We're supposed to be like coming out of the kingdom of darkness and going into the kingdom of light. And in order to enter that kingdom, we need to, to um, humble ourselves and turn from our wicked ways and ask for forgiveness for what we've done and stop, you know, whatever it, it was. And God will heal us and deliver us and we enter into his kingdom as his children. And this kingdom is here. And we can enter into that kingdom through our faith in Jesus Christ. This is what it's all about. You know, so you, you go through the baptism, the water of baptism to wash away your sins and you receive the Holy Spirit. And so after reading the Bible, I'm extremely sad that so many people are missing out. So many people don't understand and even Christians don't understand or don't stand on God's promises. And I've mentioned this before, and I mention it again because God himself is saddened by what he sees in the world today. And he sent his only son to not only save us from our sins, but to heal our bodies and deliver us from bondage. There's no reason why any born-again Christian should be still in bondage. And any of you out there, no matter what you're living there's a solution to this. There's a solution to every question and a, a solution to every problem, an answer to every question, and that is Jesus Christ. He's the only answer to everything. No matter what is going on in your life, He is the answer to everything. And so, like I said, it saddens me today to see that so many people are sick and still in bondage to addictions and do not know or understand that Jesus died to set you free from everything, from all of that, everything. You know, we didn't learn this going to Catholic Church. They didn't teach us this. It's not part of what they want you to know, I guess. And so until you read it for yourself, you don't quite understand the magnitude of what Jesus really did on the cross. And so the people that have faith in Jesus, that give their lives and become disciples, true disciples, true repentant disciples that continue in holiness, do not continue in sickness. Okay, Jesus came with the message of repentance. And when he healed people, he said, go and sin no more. And so we can clearly see that there is a, a relationship between sin and sickness, okay, over and over. And I've done videos about this before. And if you have questions, you can write me. But there is a relationship between sin and sickness. And he also said in Matthew, and this is what I want you to remember, to remember, if you are sick, call it to Jesus. This is what he said. He says, ask and you will receive. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks will receive and anyone who seeks will find. And the door will be open for those who knock. Would any of you who are fathers give your son a stone when he asks for bread? Or would you give him a snake when he asks for a fish? As bad as you are, you know how to give good gifts to your children. How much more than will your father in heaven give you good things to those who ask, right? How much more is he going to give to you if you just ask him? And over and over, Jesus says, if you just ask in my name, I will give you what you ask. And he just says to us to ask, 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 and have faith. That's simple two things. If you have faith of a mustard seed, it doesn't take very much faith. Tiny little mustard seed. And that's what I realized this week too, you know, in my own life. I've realized that if um, if I don't pray for people's healing, they'll never be healed. So I need to step out. And I've been doing that in this past week or so and a bit more than usual. And I'm amazed. God is amazing. You know, he's shown me healing. He answered my prayers. And the devil wants to stop us from doing this and tell us, oh, it's not going to work. And 
you know, and, and he's going to tell us all kinds of lies. But this week, I really had the conviction in my heart to step out of the box, just pray for people, because I know one thing, if I don't pray, they will not get healed. And if I do pray, well, there's a possibility, right? And I'm just an instrument being used by God. And uh, it's not me. It's It's got nothing to do with me. I'm just the instrument that God will use to heal people. And I've seen healings this week, and it's been absolutely wonderful. And I encourage you, if you're a believer and you're afraid to step out, just do it. Just do it. Because if you don't, people won't get healed. But if you do, well, at least you can't say you didn't try. Right? And we have to stop thinking that it's about us. It's not about us. It's all about glorifying God. It's all about bringing these people into God's kingdom. That's all that really matters right now with the time so short. So I continue in the Bible where James, the book of James, uh, it's a letter he says to, to, to people that he wrote to. He says, Is anyone amongst you sick? Let him call for the elders of the church. Now, the elders of the church just means mature people in the assembly. Okay, the church is not a building, church is actually people. So, call for the mature people in the faith. Okay, that you know, people that are righteous and that are holy. You know, pray to them that have faith and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith will save the sick and the Lord will raise him up. And if he has committed sins, he will be forgiven. You see the, 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 the link between the sin and the sickness again. And G, uh, James says, confess your trespasses to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. So we are to confess our sins, to be repentant all the time, to be holy. Because it continues, he says, the effective fervent, fervent is like knock, 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 knock. You don't stop until he answers. Fervent prayer of a righteous man. That means a righteous man is a holy man who is living a, a good life and a holy life that is not in sin, avails much. So the effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. Elijah was a man with a nature like ours, and he prayed earnestly that it would not rain. So earnestly, it means like he just continued fervently to pray and say, God, 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 I pray, you know, and he's like, you know, really praying. So he prayed earnestly that it would not rain, and it did not rain on the land for three years and six months. And he prayed again, and the heaven gave rain, and the earth produced its fruit. So you see, if you if you really, 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 really want something, God is going to give it to you. He's a good God. He's a faithful Father. There's nothing He would not do for you if it's in His will. If it's good for you, and if it's what He wants for you, He will do it. And so he wants to be glorified. And that's the thing that come to me this week. He wants to be glorified. So I'm telling you right now, if you are sick or if you have somebody around you that's sick, that's suffering, whether it's physical or mental or emotional, whatever it is, God wants you to pray or he wants you to reach out to someone who will pray for you because he wants all the glory. He wants to be glorified. He wants you to know him. And so he's always going to do it in such a magnificent way that you will have no doubt that it was God himself that healed you. That, that's what I believe and that's what I know. It's more than a belief, it's what I know. And this is what he's been putting on my heart this week. He wants to heal you, but he wants the glory. So, you know, if, for example, if, uh, if someone prays for you, if I prayed for you or someone prayed for you, don't turn around and take a pill and say, oh, the pill healed me. That's an insult to God, right? If someone prays for you, just trust in that prayer, put everything aside. And when you are healed, you will say, this, is, this was God, nobody else. It wasn't the pill. It was God. It's very important to do that because God wants all the glory. So. If you go to someone for prayer, choose someone who has a strong faith and who lives a holy life. Because many people, they don't have faith. They want people to pray for them or, you know, they receive prayer in church, but they don't have faith that they're going to be healed. Uh, and it's, it's really, really sad. In Luke 18, this is the parable that Jesus shared. I just want to say hi to Mary Poku. Thank you for being here, Mary. Um, so 
he spoke the parable to them. Jesus spoke the parable to them that men always ought to pray and not lose heart, saying, There was in a certain city a judge who did not fear God nor regard man. Now there was a widow in that city, and she came to him, saying, Get justice for me from my adversary. And he would not for a while, but afterwards he said within himself, Though I do not fear God nor regard man, Yet because this widow troubles me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming she will weary me. Then the Lord said, Hear what the unjust judge said. And shall God not avenge his own elect who cry out to him day and night, though he bears long with them? I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? And so this, what it's saying is that there's this woman, she goes to the judge and she's nagging him to fix this problem. And he doesn't fear God. He doesn't care for people, but she's such a nag that he's like, okay, 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 okay. She's never going to go away. So I may as well, you know, um, help her out to get rid of her. And so God, Jesus is saying, so, uh, you know, won't God avenge you even more if you cry out to him day and night? And um, and he's going to answer you speedily, he's saying. So speedily. And we can trust in that because when Jesus says something in the Bible, he means it. We can stand on his promises. We can stand on his word. And when we pray, we can say, Jesus, you said, Jesus, you said in your word that you will answer my prayer speedily. So I'm standing on that promise right now, Jesus. And you talk to him like this, and that is a prayer of faith, and he will answer you. And it says at the end, nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, will he really find faith on the earth? I could never understand what this phrase was doing with this parable until a pastor explained it to me a while ago and, and explained that. Many people today in church, because this is about the elect, because he just said, uh, and shall God not avenge his own elect, which means the people that are his, that it, like his children who are born again, you know, um, will he not answer them speedily if they ask continually? Of course he will. And then he says, will the son of man find faith on the earth when he comes? Well, Jesus is coming back. And we know he's coming back soon. You know, it could be next week. It could be in 10 years. We don't know. But anyway, soon is what it is. And um, and will he find faith? And I understand what that means today because so many people do not have faith. They, they say they believe in Jesus, but they don't believe Jesus. They don't believe his word. They don't obey his word. They don't believe it. They believe he existed. You know, but they don't believe what he says in the word. And that is really, really sad today. So, hello to my sister Cindy in Florida. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, so, we're going to, to, to wrap it up there soon. In 2 Timothy 3, in the last days, remember that there will be difficult times in the last days. And we are... In those last days and the more it goes the more we are in the last days right people will be selfish and greedy and boastful and conceited and it goes on about you know ungrateful disobedient to their parents irreligious which means unholy people and unkind and merciless and on and on I'll let you read it for yourselves but it says at the end in number five they will hold to the outward form of religion but reject its real power and uh, this was Timothy said this, keep away from such people. So if you have people that you know that that uh, give uh, off, um, how would I say, an impression of being religious, but they're not standing in power, they're not having, they don't have the power of God in them, they're not reaching out and praying for people and standing on God's word and you know, God, Jesus said before he left, he gave a great commission. He says, go out and make disciples of all nations and teach them to obey everything I taught you. Baptize them in the name uh, of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. 
and lay hands on them and they will be healed, deliver them from demons. So we are called as believers to be disciples. We're not only called to believe, we are called to be disciples and to make disciples. So that is what the faith is all about. It's not about going to church on Sunday and singing a song. It's about being a disciple, being in God's will, obeying his word. And the word says, don't only be hearers of the word, be doers of the word. So get out there and do the word. Stand in faith and pray for people for their healing. Help them be delivered because people are suffering. They're suffering because they don't know God. They don't know the truth. And it's time for us as believers to get out there and tell people the truth because they're all going to hell in a handbasket, to put it very plainly and sadly. That's what it is. So people, don't go to people that hold the outward form of religion but reject its real power. Keep away from such people. Don't go to them for prayers. Go to somebody that has a track record track record, and do like Jeremiah. It says in Jeremiah, um, you know, Jeremiah cried out to God. It says, heal me, O Lord, and I shall be healed. Save me and I shall be saved for you are my praise. So Jeremiah cried out to God like this, you know, and if you cry out to God and be fervent and persistent in prayer and you ask God to heal you from your ailment, to deliver you from whatever it is that's keeping you down, depression, anxiety, fear, addictions, whatever it is, God will show up. You show up to God, God will show up to you. Remember that those who are saved and born again into God's kingdom and who finish the race will spend eternity with the Lord Jesus. In Revelations, it is written, He will wipe every tear from their eyes. This is in heaven. They will, there will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain for the old order of things has passed away. So in heaven, that's the way it's going to be. But you need to find the right path to heaven. So many people out there think, oh, if I'm a good person, I'm going to go to heaven. That's a lie from the devil. And you need to read the word. You need to know the truth. Don't listen to anybody. Not even me. Don't believe a word I say. Go read it for yourselves. Don't trust nobody with your salvation, with your eternal life, because eternal uh, eternity is a long, 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 long time to be wrong, right? Don't trust nobody. So I want to take a minute right now. I want to pray for you. If you're listening to me, I pray to the Father in the name of Jesus. I pray, Father, that you would open their hearts, Lord, to the truth right now. Lord, I pray that you would open their eyes and their ears, Lord, to the truth. And I pray, Lord, that you would answer the desires uh, that are most profound in their hearts, Lord, desires to be healed and to be delivered right now in the name of Jesus Christ. And I pray that any cancer cells be healed right now in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for those that, that have trouble uh, standing, uh, trouble with their back, be healed right now in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for everyone that is listening, for their muscles to be renewed and uh, strengthened. I pray for the strength to come back in their bodies, Lord Jesus. I pray for people with diabetes to be healed right now in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for arthritis to be healed right now in the name of Jesus. I pray for people who are suffering with heart problems to be healed right now in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for deliverance, Lord, for the spirits of anxiety and fear and depression to leave right now in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray, Lord, that your Holy Spirit would come over these people, Lord, that are listening right now and that will listen to this in the future, Lord. I pray that your Holy Spirit would come over them, Lord. Wash over them right now, Lord. Reveal yourself to these people, Lord, whose hearts are pure and they are seeking you, Lord Jesus, and they want to, to find the truth, Lord, because you are the truth, the way, and the life, Lord. And everything that you say in your word is a promise to us, and we stand on those promises right now. You said, Lord, that you would answer our a fervent prayer, Lord, of a faithful person, Lord. You would answer that prayer faithfully and speedily, Lord. And we stand on that promise today in the name of Jesus. Amen. So that's my message for you. I, I'm, I so... Um, I so desire my heart for you 
all to know the truth, to know Jesus, to know how much he loves you, he cares for you, he died for you. He went on that cross, he died for you, knowing, knowing how none of us deserved it, but he loved us enough to die for us. I mean, imagine how uh, that must have been. And he died not only for the, 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 you know, the forgiveness of our sins, he also died for our healing, our physical healing, and for the deliverance, for the peace that we have that surpasses all understanding for those who choose to follow him. So that's, uh, that's the message that God wants to give you today. And, uh, you know, and I, I reach out to you if anybody wants prayer from me or for, for anybody, like depending on where you are in the world, Florida, like Cindy's down in Florida, and I know people all around the world. So just reach out to me and uh, we can do it online or I can hook you up with people maybe in your area if there are any there, real disciples, believers that stand on the word of God and uh, and I've seen the healings for themselves, you know, because God is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. And we are coming upon a time right now in the world where uh, people are going to need to really reach out to God because I'm telling you, the health services won't be there the way they used to be. Many people right now, like since March here in Canada, don't have access to health care the way they used to. If you are not getting your cancer treatments the way you did before and you are worried, you, you, you are sick and you need prayer, please, please reach out to me, reach out to disciples, you know, if you know anybody, uh, we will pray for you because God wants to heal you. Call it to God yourself and he will heal you and deliver you. So that's it. I, I pray you have a blessed week and uh, thank you for listening. Thank you for being here. God bless you all, and I see you again next week. Goodbye.